It's imperative that the companies and the unions stay at the table and try and get new deals so we can get that vote out there. At the end of the day, if, if we don't have a deal, one of these unions for some reason doesn't get to an agreement with the company, then the way that the Railroad Act works is Congress will have to take action to avert a strike in our country. I personally think the best way to do it is by doing it at the bargaining table and not having taken action by Congress. But, but if need be, you're saying you would ask Congress to take action? They're gonna, they'd have to, that's, that's part of the, the act, that's part of their responsibility. Biden's Labor Secretary Marty Walsh essentially doing away with whatever leverage the rail workers have in regard to their negotiations with their employers. And really the sticking point about the new union contracts is over the issue of being able to take some time off to deal with a family emergency or medical emergency. The fact that that sticking point remains a sticking point is infuriating. And the fact that Marty Walsh just said that Congress would have to intervene, he would want Congress to intervene to essentially force a contract upon these rail workers, in my opinion, is a bit of an issue. But I also understand why he would say that if there were a rail strike, it would absolutely tank the economy and the Biden administration is terrified about that. Now let's back up a little bit, give you a little bit of context and then we'll discuss. So first, again, a reminder, this is mostly about the fact that these rail workers just wanna be able to take some time off if there is an emergency in their lives without being retaliated against. Pay was never the main sticking point in these negotiations. The main issue that led the rank and file of the Brotherhood of Maintenance of Way Employees Division and signalmen is the sign of um, is the lack of paid sick days in the rejected tentative labor agreements. Railroad management has already rejected the union's request to add sick days to the next tentative agreement in order to get a deal membership would ratify. I mean, it, it really is insane. And and the union uh, workers did reject the proposed contracts, even though their union representation wanted them to support it. Um, I have more details, but Jenk, what do you think about what Marty Walsh said there? Well, I don't like what he said. <laughs> the old Boston accent, but I loved his. But okay, I hated oh. what he said, but I loved his Boston accent. Okay, you know we'll go to tell them that's New York. <laughs> I can't do it. Anyways, yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, Marty Walsh. Uh, <laughs> So look, strong opinions. Uh, number one, uh, I totally disagree with the uh, Biden administration. What Marty Walsh did there was uh, throw labor under a bus or under a train, if you will. I agree, yeah. Uh, and so th that's actually indisputable. Why they did it today is an interesting question. So um, the strike and, and the decision on the strike would happen after the election. So November 19th and then December is another, early December is another uh, decision point, okay? So I under, I would understand if they were about to go on strike like two days before the election and the Biden guys are panicking, right, supply right. chain issues, inflation, and oh my God, it's gonna be mayhem, it's terrible timing, right? But it's after the election, so what are you coming out here and cutting their legs out from underneath them for? So guys, this is the most important part, okay? So if the two sides are negotiating, well, that's between them, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the workers can use their leverage to say, yeah, we, of course, uh, you, it will create supply chain issues. It will be an infrastructure mess, and that's our leverage. That's why we want sick days, etc. But when, but the, in this particular case, the government can actually prevent them from striking. Exactly. And so, since the government can prevent them, if the government state doesn't say anything. They're still on an even footing because they don't know what the government's gonna do. But when, as soon as the government says, no, we're gonna not allow you to strike, then the workers have lost all leverage. Yes. And then at that point, that means they're already screwed. The negotiation is irrelevant, right? It's not perfectly irrelevant, but it was, this was by kneecapping labor. That's exactly right. And what I don't understand is, Look, there, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of rail workers who are threatening to strike in solidarity. So the thing about Congress getting involved and forcing them or, or blocking them from striking is fascinating because what if the workers say, nah, we don't care what Congress says, we're gonna strike anyway, we're gonna get what we want. Because again, if they stand in solidarity and there's hundreds of thousands of them willing to do this, are their employers gonna literally fire hundreds of thousands of them? Or is the federal government going to take some sort of action against them? I mean, um, I doubt it. That would, I mean, 
that would require Biden to have any kind of strength. But the only time that corporate Democrats have strength, of course, is when they're undercutting progressives or labor or anything like that. So it's not impossible. Uh, but guys, uh, it, it's weirdly preemptive. And it's because as always with corporate Democrats, they're in a panic. Industry must be protected. The yeah. economy and the stock market must be protected. Hold on, let him finish. And by the way, the CNN article that I happen to read on it, massively biased. Of course, uh, I mean, always, it's a corporate always. owned company, yeah. a corporate owned media, you know, entity. So of course it's going to be. And look, CNN, along with its uh, the corporations that sponsor CNN, don't want the rail workers to strike. They want Congress to get involved because uh, they're worried about their profits being impacted by the strike. Think about it. Thirty percent of freight is transported through rail. 30%, that is significant. So we're talking about a potential strike of 110,000 rail workers. And that would have obviously an impact on our supply chain. It would have an impact on already soaring prices due to inflation. People who need to buy cars would have difficulty doing so. Factories would shut down due to shortages of parts that they need. So all of these corporations are keeping an eye on this potential rail strike. And they're terrified because it would absolutely cut into their profits. And this is why labor power, when it's organized, is so incredibly powerful. Because it's really the only way to put the employers or get the employers to their knees and and get what you need as an employee. And in this case, what they're asking for is so reasonable, guys. They're not asking for like multi-million dollar salaries. They're asking for days off so they can tend to what we all deal with in life. Health issues, family emergencies. Right now, workers need uh, workers who need only a day or two off when they're sick are expected to make up the time with other work days or lose pay altogether. And they're like, no, we don't accept this. And the fact that Congress might block them from striking is terrible. The fact that Marty Walsh said what he said on CNN, terrible, because again, that does away with the leverage that these organized workers have. And I guess we'll see how it plays out. One other thing I'll mention, just to be absolutely fair, is if Congress blocks the strike and they basically force a contract onto these workers, there's nothing indicating that the contract has to be what the employers want, right? There is a possibility the contract could be something that the employees want. But with that said, we know how Congress works, so I wouldn't hold my breath on that. But I wanted to be fair and at least tell you the possible ways this could go in. Yeah, so the reason I said the CNN article was so biased because they say, uh, now if they strike you, we could have empty shelves in all of the stores and this is Okay, well, that could happen. So uh, at that point, I'm like, okay, that's fine. They're laying out one of the possibilities. Then when they got to the offer made by the co- railroad companies to the workers, they're like, it was already a very generous offer. <laughs> Hold on, how do you know that? They, look, their union leadership told them to take the o- offer because they're panicked because they, they work for the Democrats, right? And they're like, yes, sir, absolutely, sir. We will sell out our workers instantly, sir. Yes, Joe Biden, sir, yes, sir, right? No, 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 they're supposed to be working for you, not the other way around. Anyways, uh, but the, uh, the rank and file voted it down because they thought it wasn't quote unquote generous enough. But CNN comes in and goes, no, they're wrong. It was a generous <laughs> office offer. By the way, we're unbiased. We're I totally know, objective and neutral. But goddamn workers are gonna cause shortages because they wouldn't take a whole two days for sick leave. Can you believe that? And these sons of bitches now want three sick days? To be fair to them though, Jake, <laughs> their stock portfolios have already been suffering and mm. they just don't know if they can take any more. Yeah, you know? yeah that, that does seem fair. Yeah. So <laughs> last thing is my personal take on it. So look guys, it, it would create issues and those issues would affect all of us, including me. So do I want to have shortages and inflation, etc.? Of course I don't want that, right? Now, having said that, for this is a concept that is completely novel to the right wing. I care about people I don't know, okay? So I think what they're doing is really important. I think what they're doing is creating leverage for all workers in the country, not just themselves. And that they are beginning to show employee employers that, hey, you've gotta pay fair wages, you've gotta have fair, you know, working conditions, etc. And if they do that, everybody, everybody on TV will yell at them. Everybody in Washington will yell at them. They'll pretend that the guys 
that are you know working class guys are the real problem. And the poor executives at the railroad companies, how will they ever survive? By the way, the union guys make excellent points. They're like, this sick leave thing would be 1% not of your revenue of your profits. Like, so that's yeah. a thing you can't afford while you're making record profits. Yeah, that's how it's just, vicious it, they are. It's, just, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just unbelievable. Everything they're saying, the management is saying is factually incorrect. And it, it happens every time they're like sitting on a mound of money, because it's not a private company. These are companies that are in stock market, etc. You can see how much revenue they have, you can see how much profit they have, and they go, oh my God, we can't afford it. What do you mean you can't afford it? I just saw your profit statement, and I just saw you do billion dollars in. In buybacks. I know, but remember, their fiduciary responsibility is to their shareholders. Maximize profit. Yeah. Okay, well, so that's why this would be an amazing example. And it might lead to more strikes and more uh, employees saying, you know what? God damn it, enough is enough. And look, this is in yeah. my book, and I don't want to get too far into it, but the difference between wages and productivity, uh, let's say in the year 2017, for example. If they had gone, if your wages had gone out with productivity, you know how much more you'd make on average for the median American worker? $17,000 more per year. That's how much they took from you by redistributing the wealth to the top. And now when you say, hey, can I get a sick day off? They say, no. And then who does it for them? Not Republicans, but Joe Biden, okay? And the corporate goddamn Democrats. And, and, and in response to this video, what we will get is, can you believe they're saying this before an election when you should be kissing the ass of sellout corporate Democrats? No deal, no deal. You undermine workers, we come for you. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.